Well, this should be an interesting video because I have not just one, but two Arbor Models kits to put together. So these were sent to me by one of my viewers who was hoping for some help to finish them. There's a Brooks 260 and then the Sierra 460 kits by Arbor Models. So the Brooks 260 is already partially finished. It looks like he did some pretty good work here. So I think I'll work on putting this one together first, just get that working, and then move on to the Sierra 460 after that. So for these two kits, I'm not going to be doing any painting. Um, he wanted to handle that himself after the main assembly was done. So I'm just going to be working on getting these running as smoothly as possible and putting the whole superstructure body all that together. And he did mention that um, he started working on the cab, but the wood started splitting and coming apart. So I may also look into 3D printing part of, or possibly the whole cab, depending on what it needs. Let's see. These axles might be extras, I'm not sure. Because I do already see that these are in the tender trucks. There's the body, smoke box front, inside weight. So this should have a decent amount of haps to it for pulling a few cars around. For now, I'll just start with the chassis and see how this all came together and how everything's working. I'm gonna take the front truck off for now, just so that it's not flopping around while I test things out. Okay, so this is held on by this uh, piece of tubing here, which slid out of place a little bit. There, that's where it should be. Let's see, it looks like this is a little Bueller motor, so that should be a nice quality. Needs some oil. Let's try that again. Okay, much better. Seems like a good strong runner. Good torque. Now for hooking this up, there's a piece of tubing right here. This was also part of the kit. So that hooks up right to there. This is really stiff though, so I think I'm going to replace that with something else. But I can at least use that for testing to start off. It seems like it's running pretty smooth. Well, it does seem like the uh, chassis is running pretty smoothly, so I don't think I'll have to do much there on this one. Okay, so for now I think what I'll do is finish up the, uh, let's finish up the body and then get more of that together for some actual testing. So let's see. This was already glued on before, but it looks like it uh, got knocked off while it was in shipping. That's no problem though. Tender floor. These will fit in the front here, just like that. And then there's an opening in the front for the motor's shaft and universal to come through. All right, so skipping ahead a little bit here, 
Um, the glue wasn't quite holding the tender body together, so I ended up soldering all these parts, which you can kind of see some of it in there. So that should be much stronger now. Then I uh, got it all screwed onto there, got the trucks mounted. So now I can get on to installing the motor and seeing how the engine itself runs. And I just put these parts on here to see how things were lining up, and I think this is all looking pretty good so far. Got the motor mounted in the tender now, and that is our burst mounting system for the motor. You uh, wrap a strip of brass around it and take a good guess on where the screws go. And I've just got that temporarily hooked up to the engine, and I made a slight improvement to the uh, um, worm shaft support. I added some brass bearings in there because it was originally just turning in the uh, white metal, which I don't really know how long that would last considering how soft this stuff is, so hopefully that'll improve the life of it. It seems to be working pretty well so far. There's just a very slight bind in one of the drive wheels that's causing just a small, very slight jumping motion. So I'll see if I can improve that at all. Skipping ahead a little bit now, I think I've gotten the binds pretty well worked out now. So it's running pretty smoothly. I also went ahead and soldered on these fender pieces since they're kind of a pain to work with. So um, that should um, make it hold together a lot better using solder instead of glue or some other adhesive, even epoxy. And the drawbar down here is one that I printed out because I found that the frame of the tender sits a lot higher than the engine allows the drawbar to sit. So that was causing the rear drive wheels to lift off the track, which of course is not good. So by making that offset uh, draw bar, the drive wheels can all sit flat on the track and that really helps out a lot. Also, I made a couple of their little changes. Um, so the uh, walkway here is screwed down to that rear piece, which um, had been glued on before, but I broke off the glue and uh, cleaned out as much of that as I could. So that's now held in place by that 256 screw that has the draw bar on there and that makes it a uh, that makes it much much easier to remove the body if needed you know, Instead of having to kind of work in there with and get to those really tiny 080 screws You just take out the one in back and the one in front and off it comes It runs on the 18 inch radius, but uh, it kind of fights it a little bit also because of this drive tubing. So replacing that tubing with maybe a Northwest Short Line Universal or another quality universal should help with the curves. At least replacing this one piece, it should be fine to leave the other piece in there, but I'll just leave this as tubing. I'll let the owner decide what he wants to do with that. For now though, it's running and it's running pretty well. I wouldn't call that perfect, but it's really not bad. Low speed control isn't quite the best just because it's really difficult to work out all those uh, binds in the mechanism just due to its um, design. That is looking good though. So I'll just uh, finish up a couple more details on here and put together a cab and then I'll get to work on the other kit. Okay, and that's all the assembly and detail that I was asked to do on here. So I'm at least done with this kit. Um, got it ready to hold the domes on there so they can be lined up and then put in place once the painting is done. And I also made a new 3D printed cab based on the uh, Arbor plans and the instructions. I think that came out looking pretty good. Just needs a little bit of sanding and filing here and there, I think, to finish it up. 
but that should look really good when it's done. Now it's time to get on to the 460. Now this one is definitely unstarted, aside from just a few parts that are missing. It looks like the original owner of the kit probably tried to assemble the cylinders and crossheads, probably got frustrated, maybe even threw the parts out, so those are missing. But um, the owner of this kit who sent it to me, he has an additional one that's on hand just for spare parts, so he sent me some of that stuff. We'll see if it's all there, and if not, I'll just try to recreate what's missing. Now, as for building this, um, I'm not going to go into the amount of detail in this video that I am for the 040 that's also currently in progress, but you can at least see a general summary of what I'm doing here. <clears throat> what? Okay, that shouldn't have been necessary, but at least that's cleared out now. Of course... The axle slots are, once again, a size under the axle, so I'll have to clean that out. <laughs> and again, what? So it seems like the top of the chassis is perfectly flat, but the bottom of it is really warped. So it's not like the part was cast incorrectly. They just made the molds wrong from the look of it. I'll have to see if I can get that leveled out. Okay, so what I did here was I um, filed down the slot so that it was kind of a square shape, but still um, sitting too high on the axle. And then I used the eighth inch drill bit to round it out. And it seems to have gotten it sitting to where it needs to be. And that's all rolling now and sitting flat on all six wheels. Although I did go a little too far on one side so you can see the left side middle wheel kind of lifts up. If that causes problems, then I'll just uh, find a way to kind of build that back down a little bit. See what I can do to fix that, but I think it'll be okay. We'll see. And yet again, what? Okay, so that was a bit of a difficult fix, but I think I've got it working. So what I did was I completely filled these two holes in with solder and then measured out the exact distance they need to be with calipers, drilled them back out, and put some brass tubing inserts in there since um, lead solder is not exactly strong enough to work as a bearing surface. And I think I got things right. So it seems to be working pretty smoothly so far. Of course, I can make other small adjustments here and there. But I think this is going to work. So far, so good. Now that things seem to be working pretty well, I'm working on some of the main body assembly just so that I can do some actual testing. I'm leaving this smoke box separate from the boiler for now, so a little bit of a wobble there, but that's all right. Walkway that's held on there by a screw, and the cab is soldered to the walkway which has a tab in there that holds the back of the boiler down. Surprisingly, the quality of the body components is actually pretty good. Um, the cab, it fit together perfectly, soldered together nicely. I had, I didn't have even the slightest issue from it. So if they had put that kind of work and quality into the chassis, this might have actually been a really nice quality kit. So now I'm just uh, working on finishing up the tender body. So getting that all soldered together, just got the one piece left to do. And then the uh, chassis here, motor is held in by that brass band, just like I did on the other one. This one's a pretty nice Sagami can motor, so it should be smooth running, pretty quiet and efficient. But we'll see how that all does. Now I just need to get this all put together. So while making the first test run, it had a short circuit the moment it went into a curve, and I think I found the problem. These wheels are actually touching the bottom of the frame, which means I'm going to have to file out quite a bit of clearance around there so that those flanges won't hit that anymore. 
Okay, so I think I have enough clearance in there now, so let's see what happens. Pretty noisy. I think there's a problem with the uh, worm. Electrical pickup's not that good, so I'll have to see what I can do about that. So far, no shorts. Taking a 22 inch radius just fine. Switches. All right, so it made it around to that curve with no short circuits. Let's take it over to the 18 inch radius and see if it does this as well. Get those cars out of the way, flip these switches. See if it can make it through a switch. It's working. So I think I got enough clearance in there. Make sure it's just as well in reverse. Because I do know it shifts forward and back a little bit. Okay, I think that did it. Aside from that noise, this is actually turning out to be a very smooth runner. Well, with that out of the way, I think I can get on to doing the main rods, pistons, and all that now. Okay, I've got one of the crosshead and guide assemblies all put together, and it seems to be working smoothly. And you can also see that I had to cut off the end of the pin there, just like what was done on the 260, because the side rods needed clearance. Now for the other side, I'll have to make a new guide from scratch, because as you can see, the original owner just kind of got a hot soldering iron, went to town on it, and totally destroyed the part. After thinking about it for a while, I decided to try 3D printing a new part. So I'm going to do some reliability testing on this for a little while, see how it holds up, and if all looks good, then I'll just uh, do some finishing touches, and this one will be ready to go back. Well, I've had this running for over an hour now in multiple directions to make sure that everything is fine, and so far it has worked completely flawlessly. Not a derailment, short circuit, or anything else. So I'd say that mechanically this thing is now completely ready to go. Well, after drilling a few holes for details, I've now done everything that I was asked to do with these. Both are running well, at least to the best that I was able to get them. And hopefully they'll both be good runners for a long time and turn out to be some real nice looking models too.